To begin, you'll log into the Credential Publisher. You'll log in using the same login credentials you created when setting up your account in our account system. The two systems are synced, so you won't need a separate login. After you log into the publisher, you'll be directed to the search page. You'll see this Add New Bulk Upload dropdown at the top, and if you click it, you'll see this gray Bulk CSV Upload subheading. Underneath that, you'll see the Support Services link, and clicking that will direct you to the Bulk Upload tool. On the tool, you'll see Select Your Organization at the top of the page. To select your organization, simply click the drop-down and select your organization from the list. The page will then say that you're on your organization's bulk upload tool. Moving down to the introduction, you'll see that this is just an overview of the process of the bulk upload, as well as steps to upload new support services and steps to update existing support services. To the right, you'll see this Print This Page button, which will allow you to download and print a PDF of the steps to bulk upload your support services. Moving down to step one, complete your organization. You will expand this My Organizations tab, and you'll see your organization, your organization's CTID, and the addresses for your organization listed below. To use these addresses in your upload spreadsheet, just include the address IDs as a pipe-separated list of values. Moving on to step two, this is where we'll select our properties. So you'll notice we have it selected to upload new support services for the purpose of this demo, but you can also update existing support services once the data is in the registry. So you'll see this required properties tab which expands, and these properties are part of our minimum data policy and have been pre-selected for you if you look over here. So you'll, they'll automatically be included in your spreadsheet when you download the template. The only property that is under this required tab and is not checked off and not a part of our minimum data policy is offered by over here. The reason for that is because any support services that are uploaded will be owned by your organization and offered by is only required if another organization offers your support services. So offered by will not be automatically included in your spreadsheet. Please be sure to check off that property if it's applicable. Just to run through these required properties, their external identifier, resource name, description, subject web page, language, and life cycle status type. Like I mentioned, these are automatically selected. There's no way to unselect them, so no need to worry about missing one of them from your spreadsheet. And just looking at the minimum data, you'll see we have the property name in this column. In this column, we have a description of the property as well as an example of what data goes into that property. We also have these special data requirements on how to format the data in the spreadsheet for the upload. You'll notice that this property, lifecycle status type, has these little blue information bubbles next to each of the data values that you can click, and it provides more information on each option, as well as how to format the data in the spreadsheet. As I mentioned, this policy is very minimum. So we encourage our partners to publish past the minimum data policy so we can have that rich data set in the registry. The first tab past the minimum required data is our recommended properties. If you expand the tab, you'll see that none of these properties are selected. So you have the ability to scroll through here, look at the property names, the description and examples, and select the ones that are applicable for your support services. You'll see you can select from delivery type, support service category, or the types of support services offered by an agent. You'll see the data values that you can choose from over here for some of these. And you also have accommodation type, um, if the support service offers any modification to facilitate equal access. If you want to add any of these to your spreadsheet, you just check them off and they'd be included in the downloaded template. And I'm just going to check them off. So they'll be in our template. And continuing down the page, 
you'll see we have an optional properties tab. And in this tab, we have part of support service, which is if the support service is part of another support service and you want to show that relationship in the data. We have availability listing, a URL that lists locations where someone can pursue the support service. We have available at, which points to physical locations where the support service can be pursued, as well as available online at, which is the online location where the support service can be pursued. We also have um, occupation type, where you can enter ONET codes, um, keywords that will help others find the support service in searches, the date effective, the expiration date, as well as an alternate name. The next tab is the condition properties tab. This is where you can add things like if your support service has any requirements, um, you can add audience type. Um, and again, you can select from a list of values over here in this column. And continuing down the page, we also have financial assistance properties. Um, if you want to include any financial assistance profiles, you just need a name, a description, and a subject web page for each profile. And we also have cost properties down here um, if you want to add any costs. And you would just need an external identifier, a description of the cost profile, and the details URL. And once you've selected all of your properties, you'll just come down to step three to download your template. Be sure to select include sample data and include instructions so that those will be included in the template for your reference and click the download template spreadsheet button. And this spreadsheet will save to your desktop as a CSV file. You can convert the CSV to an Excel or a Google Sheet to easily input your data. And I'm going to go to the template that I've downloaded. So you can see the template here. And I've opened it in Google Sheets to start inputting my data. You'll see sample data and instructions have been included in rows two and three so that you can reference them in the spreadsheet and you don't have to keep going back to the bulk upload page. You'll see in row one that all of these different properties up here are the properties that were included in my spreadsheet. The required properties have been included as well as any other recommended or optional properties or condition profiles. And as a note, we have a minimum data policy, as I mentioned, but for the rest of the properties, if some of the properties do not apply to some support services, that is okay. Just fill in the data that you have. So some of these columns over here um, under recommended and optional properties might be blank, and that's totally okay. Um, just fill in the data that you have. So once you're done filling out the template, You'll delete column A, as well as sample data and instructions in rows two and three. Those need to be removed before upload or you'll receive an error. It's also important to note to save the file as a CSV file, comma separated values, as that is the file extension that works with our system. So I actually have a filled out bulk upload sample and I'm going to download this as a CSV file. And going back to the bulk upload page. So I'll continue down here. Step four just has some helpful tips and tricks while you are inputting your data into your spreadsheet. But we have already inputted our data, so we are going to scroll down right to step five. Um, to upload your data, you'll just choose file and choose the file from your desktop and you can select preview and this will replicate the data that you have entered into your spreadsheet. Um, you'll see the properties as the column headers and you'll see all of your data and this is a good opportunity to quality check what you've entered and just make sure that everything looks okay. And when you're done, you can just keep scrolling down and you'll see the save this data to the publisher button. You'll just click it. 
and it'll let you know that the upload is in progress and it will give you an estimated upload time as well. And once your data has been uploaded, you will get this green success bar that says your data has been uploaded. And if you keep scrolling, you'll see the upload results. And so the next step is to approve your support services to be published. So to do this, you'll just click on this organization summary page link that's underneath step six. And this will take you to what we call the summary page where you approve data to be published. And depending on how much data you have in the publisher, you'll just wait for all of the tabs to load. And you'll see the support services tab right here. If you go there, you'll see all of the support services that you have entered into the publisher. And so to approve the data, you'll just select all and then come down here and click this approve all selected items button. And it will ask you if you are sure you want to approve all of your support services. You'll just click OK. And once everything is approved, the publishing team will get an automatic email notification that you have approved your data. And we will go in and publish it to the registry. And it will be made viewable in the credential finder.